As we approach the end of our mission here in the Middle East, the Command Sergeant Major and I would like to share with you some of the highlights of the great accomplishments that our soldiers of the 28th did. But first, if you were at the dinner dance this last past year before we actually deployed, our theme was a decade of deployments. Now, over the last 10 years, multiple units within the 28th Aviation Brigade, greater than 10, deployed. However, the last time the brigade deployed as a whole was in 2009. Some of the traditions to mark our presence here in the Middle East, the soldiers get together and paint up some of the T-walls used to protect our talk and our work areas. So the last time the brigade was deployed, as I said, was 10 years ago. And if you look behind me, is one of the walls that was painted for OIF 0911 when the brigade was deployed. So one thing you'll notice, if you know anything about the organic units that were a part of the cab at this time, is that the 1104th ARB wasn't a part of this deployment. So after North Carolina filled the void, the, the 1104th uh, wasn't able to go down range with the brigade. Uh, the 1104th did end up deploying to Afghanistan in 2012, 2013. Here in a minute, before we get to the great accomplishments that our soldiers did, Command Sergeant Major will show you the great work that our soldiers did on our T-Wall to mark our presence during this deployment. So this is the new T-Wall. And just to look at it, it is, it is awesome. It's probably the most beautiful thing here on Fury. These soldiers just did such a phenomenal job, and this is 100% volunteer work. Uh, they did everything off duty, and this is their own creativity. We collaborated on a few things that we would like to see incorporated, but the whole thing came from that handful of soldiers that's on the black down there. What you see going across the top. Each task force that, that was a part of the 28 ECAB, they had their own symbol. Um, if you zoom in on all of those, the intricate detail that they were able to capture is just, it's amazing. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours were put into, put into this. And right in the middle, you can see the nice big keystone, and it's not just a, not just a red keystone, it's all decked out with 3D and shadows and everything. Just absolutely beautiful. The scenery that you're looking at, if you don't figure it out, this one is like you're sitting in the back of a CH-47 looking out the back as you're flying. That would be something that you would see, would be, you know, that flight engineer sitting on the tailgate and uh, you'd see an aircraft or two behind you and, uh, you know, whatever is out in the distance. This is kind of what you would see looking out the crew chief's window. You kind of see the outline of the crew chief there and then just looking out out into the scenery. If, it even goes down, if you look at the Liberty Bell, they recreated the crack and the little bit of writing that you can almost make out. And it just, my hat's off to them. Just, they just did a phenomenal job of this. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. That was fantastic. Now to highlight some of our achievements over here. So as you know, our task force was made up of active duty, which we refer to as Compo 1, the National Guard, Compo 2, and the Army Reserve, Compo 3. We were scattered at 13 different locations across five different countries. Our units have flown over 30,000 flight hours. The passengers that they actually transported all through the Sejo was greater than 19,000 packs. Over 190,000 miles driven. They handled over $10 million in fuel and over $13 million in ammunition. The team completed 28 aircraft phases that included 125,000 maintenance man hours and over 1,200 ground work orders closed. The cargo that our heavy lifters moved around the Sejoa is greater than 2.5 million pounds of cargo. And then our medevac had a very big mission here, saving lives throughout the Sejoa, and they document over 220 actual medevac missions. But we couldn't have done it without the support from our family, friends, and employers back home. I can't thank you enough for all the support that you have given us over this last past year. It is, we understand the sacrifices that you have went through, 
and we appreciate everything you have done to support our mission. So as we transition home, all the same support that you've come to come to know this whole deployment isn't going to change. So if any problems arise, just reach out to that same support chain because they'll be there for you. Wings of iron.